Hi guys, my name's Andy, and I'm going to be showing you how to play guitar along to real songs. Now you can do this lesson with just the first two chords from my beginner's course, E major and A major, but it's appropriate for learning guitarists at any level that aren't yet comfortable playing along to the record. Now in my opinion, the most fun you can have practicing guitar is playing along to songs that you love. If you're an absolute beginner, you'll want to have checked out lesson two, the strumming lesson, playing on the beat from my beginner's course, if you haven't already. Uh, if you've done that, this is going to be really similar, but there's a couple of things that you should know. Firstly, that count of one, two, three, four, that starts every one of my, the drum beats available on my website, isn't there in real songs generally. It generally gets taken off. So, therefore, you cannot play along to the first second. As soon as you press play, you cannot join in that quickly. And that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to listen first and then join in. Now, take song one from my beginner's course, which is called For What It's Worth by a band called Buffalo Springfield. You may have seen the video already where I teach that song at the end. It may be how you found my lessons initially. Now, that song is a bar of E, and then a bar of A for the vast majority of the song. And the way I teach it to my beginners, we just stay playing E and A for the entire song so that we can get a handle on joining to the record. Now, the first sound that you hear in that song is one strum of the E chord. And the second main sound that you hear is a, a strum of the A chord. Both of those happen on beat one. For example, E, two, three, then A, two, three, four. So we have to listen to those two sounds, the first sounds that happen on the record, and then join in from the next E. And then from there, you just do your same routine as if you're strumming on the beat again, or doing whatever strumming pattern you, you know how to do, whichever one you can manage. Let me give you an example of that now. So if I just put the song on, First sound is an E, that's our A chord, E again, 3, 4, A chord, 2, 3, 4, and from here, you can strum on every beat. Let me hear that again. So the first sound, E, then A, then we can join in, 1, 2, 3, 4, A, 2, 3, and then we can strum on every beat from when he starts singing because we've found our bearings. And once you've kind of started, if you've kept in time with the drum beat at lesson two of my beginner's course, then it should be fairly straightforward to, to play along and keep time. If it isn't, you'll want to really focus on any drums and percussion in your song because any guitars that you hear will be masked by your own guitar most likely. Your guitar will likely be louder than the song and you just won't be able to hear the difference kind of between your guitar and the other guitars in the song or you'll just hear your own, it kind of, as I say, it masks them. Uh, you may focus too much on the lyrics to know where you are initially which uh, isn't the best idea because we'll want to be focusing primarily on rhythm and the beats underpinning the the vocals and underpinning all the all the foundation of the of the music. Um, so the drums in this song are not very loud and, and very clear, has to be said. There are louder examples from level one of my beginners course. But the idea is to get you to listen. Listen to that percussion. So if we listen to this song it is there. There's a small drum kit on two, a three, and four. One, two. And that's what we listen to to keep you in time. Um, because you might go slightly wrong, because you might, you know, you might go out of time, you might drift off, you might realize, oh, I've gone totally wrong. The best idea is normally to stop and start again from the beginning. But with these songs, at level one of my beginners course, because they don't change an awful lot, there's not a lot of structure in them, it tends to be one chord sequence throughout the entire song, uh, you can actually stop and then kind of join in from the next 
E chord or whatever chord it is in the, whatever chord the first one is in the sequence because it's a regular pattern. So there, that's why I selected the songs carefully that I did at this level one. And then you'll learn to be, be aware of that, be aware of the repetition of a, a chord sequence a little later on. Um, if you're doing this with a guitar riff, say you've, you've learnt your cool riff, but you want to be able to play it along to the song. Um, whatever it is, it, if it's a guitar riff, it will repeat. So listen to the riff two or three times and then join in from there. Even join in after the first one, but you can't join in straight away. Now, if you're struggling keeping up with the tempo of the record, if you own the song, there are various ways that you can slow it down. I'm a big advocate of Spotify, and I recommend that all my students kind of use Spotify just to be able to listen to a whole load of music, and for a very small fee, you don't even have to have adverts, and you can keep playlists of all my uh, all my song lists at every level. But with that, you can't slow the record down. So if you purchase the song, you can use software to slow it down, and there'll be links to certain ones on my website if you click the link. Um, I really recommend VLC Media Player for a free download um, software that you can slow the record down slightly and there'll be a guide on how to do that. Uh, QuickTime also does it. You can slow it down a little bit and just put it at a, at a tempo that you're comfortable playing at. Um, but the songs, as I say, that I've suggested at, at level one and the chord sequences they are something that you should be able to do with regular practice and um, just a little bit of dedication and just trying to get these basic skills down, even with just just two chords, just E major and A major. So important. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Uh, do check out the rest in this playlist of my beginners course or on the next one on my website. Um, my name's Andy. Please subscribe if you like what I do. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Bye for now.